Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Would you please be seated? Well, good morning and uh, a very warm welcome to St Andrews on this not very pleasant morning here. Um, and a very warm welcome, but it is lovely to see you. And a very warm welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Uh, we're delighted that you're able to join us um, for our service. Again, I would say if you're able to um, uh, put aside uh, at home just some grape juice or uh, some bread for later on in the service to that point when we here receive the bread, the communion, uh, and you might like to receive, take, eat the bread and uh, the, the wine or grape juice. It's not communion, uh, but it is a way of being part of what is happening here. And a part of a way of saying is the bread and the wine come into us. We ask the Lord Jesus to come in and fill us and transform us. Today um, we remember St Luke, uh, the writer of the third gospel uh, and uh, the, the, the evangelist. And we, we'll learn a little bit more about him and his passions later on. But uh, as we're seated, an opening prayer and we pray together this Prayer for purity of heart. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. And we pray together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We stand to say together the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the special prayer for today the day we remember St Luke. Almighty God you called Luke the physician whose praise is in the gospel to be an evangelist and physician of the soul. By the grace of the Spirit and through the wholesome medicine of the gospel give your church the same love and power to heal through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated for our first reading? Mm -hmm. 
first lesson is from Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, beginning at verse 5. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with the present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. You also must be aware of him, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defence, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and that the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. We're going to see Psalm 147, verses 1 to 7. Would you please stand? And would you please, those sitting on uh, this side of the aisle, say verses, the odd number of verses, and to those sitting on the, this side of the aisle, say even number of verses. And would both sides please face each other? Thank you. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord is of Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Would you please be seated? The, um, psalmist writes praise the lord how good it is to sing praises to our god it is good but as a congregation we're not doing it at the moment um however uh, our singers are going to uh, uh going to uh, sing
Would you please stand? The Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 10, verses 1 to 9. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, my Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. Wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Christ. Father God, would you please speak through my very weak and foolish words. And would you help us to hear your word? In Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please be seated? Well, we're remembering and uh, thinking about uh, the Apostle Luke. Luke was a doctor. Uh, he, we're told in Colossians chapter 4, verse 14, Paul writes about him as Luke, the beloved physician. Luke was a companion of Paul, and he writes about, uh, he not only writes about Paul's journeys and Jesus' life as a, sort of a, as somebody who has heard the story, but if you're reading through the Acts of the Apostles and you get to Acts chapter 20, up to Acts 20, Paul has, uh, Luke has been writing they, that is Paul and his companions, did this or did that. And then in Luke chapter 20 verse 4, he changes and suddenly it becomes we did this, we did that. And you'll discover that the stories take on a real eyewitness account. Why? Because he was a companion of Paul. And we read in, in Timothy how he was there with Paul right at the end of Paul's ministry. He's a writer, I've already spoken that, told, said about that. He wrote the Gospel of Luke, and he also wrote Acts of the Apostles. Not everybody is aware of that, but they're two volumes, Luke and Acts, two volumes written by Luke. And he is a missionary. He has a passion for making Jesus known. And he has a passion for the word of God. At the very beginning of his gospel in Luke, he talks about how he talks about how he has spoken with those who are not apostles. He describes them as servants of the word. And in the Acts of the Apostles, he doesn't really get excited about church growth. He gets excited about how the word of God grows, how the message of God grows. And in Luke chapter 10, Luke speaks of mission, the sending of 70. And these 70 are called by Jesus to go out and to preach. And they're to preach a very simple message. It's the message that Jesus gave them. They're to go into a town or a village. They're to go to somebody's house. And this is the message that they are to preach. Peace to this house. Peace to this house. That's all we're told that they're to preach. I'm sure they said a few more words. <coughs> but shalom, completeness, wholeness, healing. 
It's a message which many of us need to hear today. We live in a time of uncertainty. Nobody really knows what is going to happen next. There's deep anxiety. We're anxious about plans. What should we do? What shouldn't we do? We're anxious about those we love. For many of us, those who we love are far away. For, for, for some of you here, you're not able to get to them. And we're anxious. We're anxious about our work and about our income. Will my job survive another lockdown if there is another lockdown? We're anxious about health and the health of those we love and care for. For some, for some, the isolation that they have been in really effectively since the beginning of April because they're in vulnerable categories, for some it's turning into despair. Uh, uh, and, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and we're beginning to think, will I ever, ever be able to see people again? Will life ever get back to normal, whatever that was? And we need to hear that message of the 70. Peace be to you and peace to your house. Of course, if I just turn up at your house and say, peace be with you, the most that it really means is that I am telling you not to worry because I'm not com coming to harm, but I'm coming to bring blessing. But what these messengers are saying is far more than that. The preachers of this message are heralds of the Prince of Peace. Notice that Jesus sends them on ahead of him to go where he is going. They come in peace and they preach peace, and he comes in peace and he preaches peace. That's what the angels declare to the shepherds when he is born, when the Son of God is born on earth. They come to the shepherds and they say, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those among whom he is well pleased. When Zechariah, when John the Baptist is born, Zechariah, his father, sings a hymn of praise to God and he speaks about how this child, how Jesus Will lead, our, will lead our feet into the paths of peace. Now, we're not talking here about the sort of peace that we get by doing breathing exercises or meditation or by taking medication. Although, of course, all those things are and can be a real, real gift of God for us. But we are speaking of, I suppose, a richer kind of peace. Five things. First of all, it's a peace, an objective peace. Peace with God. If we welcome the messengers of Jesus who say peace to this house, then we welcome the one who sends them, we welcome him as the one who can give objective peace that we are okay with God. Jesus Christ came to bring peace, to reconcile us to God. We were enemies of God. We had rebelled against God. That's what sin is. It's living in a self-direction and not in a God direction. We were cut off from God. But Jesus, the Son of God, came from God to us. He died for our sins so that we could know him as our Lord and our Savior and our friend and so that we could know God as our Heavenly Father, so that we could pray our Father in heaven. The messengers are telling us that because of Jesus, 
God's face is turned towards us, not in anger, but in love. So don't think that you need to cower away from God. Don't think that you need to earn God's approval or love. You can't, and that is not the way of peace. Instead, we receive the message of God's peace, of his forgiveness, of his love. Just as those first listeners received the message of peace, they received it (coughs) as a gift. Secondly, this is a peace as well that includes people. You see, when the messengers say peace to this house, they are being quite literal. When we welcome Jesus, then we're welcoming the one who can bring peace, reconciliation, healing and blessing to our relationships. Even our relationships in our families, where they've all gone pear-shaped. Jesus offers a new way of living. It's a way of living that is based on forgiveness, on the fact that we have all received forgiveness, and therefore we are set free to say sorry and free to forgive. And when we receive the message of peace, that God is looking at us and that God delights in us in who we are. We're set free from the need to try to prove ourselves or to stand up for our rights or to say I matter because we do matter. And we begin to realize that there is nothing that can separate us from his love. And we begin to realize that all things work together for the good for those who love him. And that actually should release us. It should release us into being gentle and gracious. I love that verse where, where Peter says, always be prepared to share the hope that you have in you. But do it with gentleness and respect. Remember we're told in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is patient and kind. And in Philippians chapter 4, at the end of Philippians 4, where Paul is talking about peace in in a beautiful, beautiful way, he begins that section by saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Why can we be gentle and patient with others? Because God is near to us. God is in control. God is there. And Paul goes on to say then that the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That objective peace, we have peace with God. That relational peace, that peace, that peace with creation, it's a message for all of creation, for our relationship with creation. The future coming kingdom of God is one where all things will be in harmony. As we follow Jesus, so his Holy Spirit can transform not just how we see other people, but how we see this world that he has, in which he has, which he has given to us. I've been reading recently about St. Sergius of Radonezh, uh, the 14th century uh, Russian, uh, Russian starets, Russian, uh, um, really Russian teacher uh, of, the, of the faith here. He went as a young man into the forest and we're told that he had a real fear of the beasts. And yet there's the well-known story of how he ends up sharing his bread with bears. Now, Now that story is just a glimpse, just a glimpse of the Old Testament vision of the future kingdom of God 
when we're told that the wolf will lie down with the lamb and the child will play over the adder's nest. It's a vision of a creation that is restored, of a creation that is at peace with itself. And then this message of peace is about the inner peace of the Holy Spirit, that peace which passes understanding, that peace which comes from being filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the love of God. Now a word of caution here. If you are living a fully authentic Christian life, seeking to be obedient to the Lord Jesus, open to his Holy Spirit, receiving his love and his forgiveness as a gift, not trying to earn it, there may well be times when you experience and encounter the peace of God. But certainly not always. Jesus was stressed. Jesus was really stressed. In Luke chapter 12, verse 50, Jesus says, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. He was the Son of God, and he knew stress. Uh, 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 and uh, we get stressed. I got really stressed about this particular talk because as of last night, late last night, it just wasn't coming. I just didn't know what I was going to say. And I, I'm somebody, I struggle with last minute stuff. Uh, and, and of course, there are times when everything happens. Emma Marie knows that and Sasha when they were busy minding their own business and it was raining very hard and suddenly the entire contents of the roof uh, 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 of, their, of, their, of, their, of their flats um, decided to um, empty itself into their flat. I suspect there wasn't that much peace around just at that particular moment. There may have been, but uh, no, there wasn't. Um, and there are times when we are afraid and there are times when we face conflict. Sometimes that conflict is necessary when we have to stand up for the truth, for the vulnerable, when we have to challenge what is wrong. I hate conflict. I will do anything to avoid conflict. And yet I know there are times when I need to step into conflict because actually it is right. The Old Testament prophets knew that, and I thank God for incredibly courageous women and men who have taken a stand for something that they know is right and true. There are times when we have to step out in faith and do something, go somewhere, go through something that, that, that sort of absolutely... Um, that, that, that strips us and makes us just so anxious and nervous. And there are times when we have to, because we are Christians, note that because we are Christians, deal with the inner demons. When we have to go to those dark places. Maybe if we weren't Christians, we really wouldn't bother about it. But actually, as we follow the Lord Jesus... So he takes us into the wilderness so that we start to deal with them so that ultimately we can be set free. And yes, maybe we will be aware of the presence of God with us and maybe we won't be. And when we are not aware of the presence of God or the peace of God with us, then we need to hold on to the fifth aspect of peace. And that is the hope of peace the hope of the peace of the coming kingdom, when we will be with the Lord Jesus in paradise, when Jesus returns and the kingdom of God is fully established. I've spoken from these verses today about the message of peace. I could have spoken about the messengers of peace, the 70. They're called to live that peace 
to trust God completely. They're released to be fully dependent of, on him. But I suspect that's another talk for another time. My brothers and sisters, maybe we are very anxious. Maybe we feel overwhelmed. Maybe we feel isolated. Maybe we feel scared and fearful. Listen to the message today. The 70 come and say, peace to you and your house. Jesus comes and says, peace to you. Peace to you and your home. He came and he said, peace to this world. Hear him say that. You are okay with God. You are okay. If you could see God's face, he is looking at you as he would look at his beloved son, the Lord Jesus. He is looking at you with a radiant, radiant face. You are okay with God. Receive it as a gift. And if, as you welcome the messengers and you welcome Jesus himself, you do not yet experience that inner peace, don't despair, it will come. For the time, hold on. Hold on to the objective peace. The fact that we are at peace with God. The fact that his kingdom of peace is coming. So listen to these words. Peace to you. Peace to you. Peace to you. And your home. Would you please stand? Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do you please be seated for our prayers as Anastasia comes to lead us. The response to Lord in your mercy is, hear our prayer. In the power of the Spirit, and in union,
friends and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loved us. We bring to you in prayer our friends and family members who are not yet saved by your Holy Spirit. We remember them now. Lord, please send your messengers, the messengers of your peace, to their door. Also, please strengthen all the doctors and medical workers who are laboring to protect our health at this time. And please comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We remember those who we know. Please give them courage and hope in their troubles. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Luke and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Would you please stand? God will speak peace to his people, to those to him, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's greet one, one another non-physically uh, by turning and facing and bowing or doing whatever but, um, uh, as we uh, share one, with one another the fact that we are part of this peace of God. Would you um, please be seated? Dima and Emma Marie, as we prepare the Lord's Table, are going to play an andante by Bach from the first sonata for violin and keyboard.
Would you please stand? The Lord is here. He is Lift up your hearts. We live the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you. And with saints and angels praising you, we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is Christ is Christ Christ is Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Would you please be seated or kneel for prayer? As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are made. We are made. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us your peace. We do welcome to the Lord's table all who love the Lord Jesus, who've received the free gift of uh, baptism and who want to follow him. If you're not quite sure where you stand with uh, your faith or if the discipline of your own church does not permit you to receive here, then we invite you still to come forward, but just indicate to me as you come forward you, that you would prefer not to receive the bread 
and I will pray you know God's blessing. But draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen.
Lord God. Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Well, again, really lovely to see you, and thank you also for joining us online with this service, whether now or uh, later on after this service. It's really great if you're, that you're able to join us. In many ways, I think we may be saying goodbye today to uh, many of you who, uh, so, well, certainly to some of you who uh, might watch uh, from the United Kingdom, because I think, uh, and from uh, probably from other places in the world, because of the change of clocks next week, um, and that might make this service a little bit too early for you to join us. It's been great having you with us. We'd love to see you, even if you do have to get up a little bit earlier, but uh, appreciate you may find other services elsewhere you're able to join. Um, today, there's no youth group, unfortunately. Um, Dan Daniel's not here and Mary's not feeling great, so pray for her. Um, uh, uh, the um, liturgy group is next week, but the confirmation group is meeting after this service. Tea and coffee are served. Please follow instructions very strictly out through the foyer, in through, around the chapter room. Only maximum of six people in the chapter room at any one time. <coughs> and then come into church. Uh, or, or the foyer to drink coffee. This week we have uh, our Bible studies on Tuesday and uh, uh, our Zoom Bible study and on Wednesday we have uh, Holy Communion here at 7.30. We continue to collect harvest gifts, non-perishable goods, also particularly men's warm clothing uh, that we can give to cold callers here or that we can pass on to the uh, Salvation Army. If there is anybody here who would be interested in sort of helping us develop a sort of clothes store, which would require quite a little bit of work, at least probably sort of half a day a week, going through items, looking at them, sorting things out, deciding what we can throw away, what we can keep, and where we can pass clothes and things on, then it has been suggested that we might want to set up a clothes store. But until we actually have somebody who would be willing and able to take responsibility for that, it's something that I'm not completely sure I want to go down, uh, just because we could end up with just so much stuff just overflowing. Um, a number of birthdays this week. Um, uh, could somebody go and hunt Marina down? Because I'm not sure. Oh, Marina is there. Well done. It was Marina. It was your birthday this week. Do come on forward. Kelvin. Where's Kelvin? I saw you here earlier on. I believe it was your birthday. I don't think Larder is here. But did anybody else have a birthday last week? Because you are very welcome to come and have a bar of chocolate, <laughs> take a bar of chocolate with you. And let's congratulate them. <laughs> I'm growing another year wiser and another year younger. <laughs> So now, would you please stand? And we're going to pray about that peace of God.
So now may that peace of God, that peace which passes all understanding, fill your hearts and your minds with the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, be with those you love and those for whom you pray now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.